on this in August. Joining us now to discuss is Georgia Congressman Austin Scott. Uh, Congressman, welcome and thanks so much for coming on. Uh, it, it, it's a big day and really a, a, a day that many Americans are waiting for. This is not about whether we should have gotten out of Afghanistan, whether we should have stayed. This is about how the withdrawal was handled by these three men, specifically Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who avoided the Senate hearings altogether. This is the first time we're going to see him and others. What do you expect from today? So, and, and Sullivan and Blinken uh, candidly ha still have a lot of questions to answer as well. Afghanistan is still a crisis. We still have a tremendous number of people who fought with our troops. Uh, in, in other surrounding countries that the State Department has done nothing to help get out. We have, still have a tremendous number of Americans and uh, people in P2 visa holders that fought with our troops that are stuck in Afghanistan uh, because of the artificial timeline that uh, Blinken and Biden set. And so I'm looking forward to hearing the testimony today in the Senate. It's uh, one of the few days where I'll actually uh, watch uh, more of what's going on instead of doing things. But we're going to watch today starting at 930. Some of the questions that are asked, uh, we obviously will have our chance tomorrow at, at 930 in the House Armed Services Committee. Some of the questions I have uh, revolve around, you know, tell, tell, tell me what we did wrong, because I gave you a list of a tremendous number of people who fought with our troops. Uh, you left them at the gates and you turn around and you brought a bunch of people out that had no business coming to America. So, so how did you determine uh, who you brought? out of Afghanistan and into the United States because a tremendous number of P1, P2, and SIV uh, visa holders were left behind, American citizens were left behind, and yet now we have a tremendous number of people in this country that we have no idea who they are or what they did to support the U.S. mission. And I want, uh, I want the generals to explain to me how they determined who they did and did not put on, on the aircraft to bring them out of Afghanistan. Who has the answers today, in your opinion? Uh, is it Mark Milley? Is it Lloyd Austin? Is it General McKenzie? I think they all have the answers, but I, I do want to go back to what I said the first time. I believe this is a Blinken and Biden catastrophe that was created by them. I do think that Blinken and Biden set the parameters under which our military operated in Afghanistan. And I do think that, that any American who goes back and reads the intelligence reports once they become declassified and the inspector general report would, would say there was no reason to give up Bagram. It made absolutely no sense to give up Bagram when they gave it up. Now, best possible scenario, you could have, you could have believed in January and February that, that maybe you could give up Bagram when you got to July, but there's no way right. that any of our military leaders reading the intelligence reports would have advised, in my opinion, uh, giving up Bagram as we got to the end of May and, and further into June with the amount of territory that the Taliban uh, was taking. They weren't just taking districts, they were taking provinces. And so uh, I'm very interested to, to see the questions that are asked. Uh, I have several questions. Uh, mine, mine will revolve around, uh, did you change your advice to the administration based on the intelligence reports coming from the ground? And if they didn't, then, then we've got a problem with our military leadership. Well, one of the things you pointed out here, our State Department confirming there are 100 Americans still stuck in Afghanistan, but we're supposed to trust the Taliban, allegedly, to ensure our Americans safe passage here because they've got to get out some way, uh, and the Taliban controls this area. Here's a quote from senior State Department official here saying this, our highest priority in Afghanistan, of course, remains helping those American citizens who wish to leave the country now to do so in ensuring safe passage and freedom of movement, whether it's for our citizens or for Afghans who wish to travel now is among our highest expectations for the Taliban as it is for many other countries, end quote. That official went on to say that 85 U.S. citizens have been left there since August 31st. Final thoughts from you on that. E e even 85, uh, one is too many. I, th I think they're just making up the numbers. The, the fact of the matter is we, we had over 200 people uh, who were family members of people that fought with our soldiers uh, at the gates. And, and they were there for days and days. Uh, they, they didn't have a problem at the Taliban checkpoint. They had a problem at the gates, at, at the airfield. And so uh, the Secretary uh, of State made a decision on who was coming in and who was not coming in. And unfortunately, they brought, they brought a lot of people in who had not fought with our troops, and they left a lot of people behind who did. And so I, I don't buy the $85 number, any, the 85 person number any more than I buy that three three and a half trillion dollars doesn't cost any money. Uh, so, you know, th this again, this this is this is just a State Department that cannot be trusted, giving numbers that are not accurate uh, to the American citizens and other people that I know up here are working with significantly more than 85 Americans.
uh, trying to get them out. Well, Congressman, you're going to have your chance tomorrow. They face the Senate today. It'll be a House committee tomorrow. You are on that one there. We will await to see your questioning as well. Congressman Austin Scott joining us live. Congressman, thank you.